Oh, we're going to come over here and we're going to join Bob for the filling and flushing uh, yeah. part of this. So just tell us exactly what we're going to see here. Okay, once the system is fitted, and as I say, you'd either have the tubes covered or you simply wouldn't have them installed if it's that particular system. What we then need to do is charge the system with the fluid. The heat transfer fluid is what will carry the heat from the collector manifold back down to the coil. So typically it works on an eight degree differential. So we have a sensor in the collector and a sensor at the cylinder. And when the fluid in the panel is eight degrees hotter, the control panel activates the pump and starts to bring this heat back to the coil. So what uh, Bob's going to demonstrate is, is how we get the fluid in there, because it's very important that we use a particular fluid with certain properties, which Bob will explain, and also that we take out all of the air at this stage. Yeah, so we've got a, a fluid uh, from Sentinel here, Sentinel R100. We put some of that into the flushing machine, the flushing car, which... Um, now, we've coloured this today, haven't we, for the purposes of this demonstration? So. Well, in fact, the, the R100 is actually blue, so we've coloured oh, it, it the oh, same. So, so we, we, we fill the car with fluid. We connect the, the, the car to and from the pumping station here so that we can flush the fluid through the, the system. And you can see we've uh, got a little bit of pipe in here to demonstrate what it looks, what, uh, a sort of pretend panel. Okay, so we switch the pump on. And then what happens almost instantly is you start to push the air from the panel. You put the fluid into the panel and start pushing the air out. Now, Mark said it's a heat transfer fluid, so it's got corrosion inhibitors in there. But most importantly, because it gets cold in the wintertime, it has antifreeze in there. And that antifreeze can degrade over time. And there's several mechanisms for making it degrade, and one of them is air. So it's quite important for it to work correctly that you have all the air eliminated from the system. And when you look inside the pump, you will see that there's some air coming out of there, and eventually that air will, will, will be dissipated through the pump, and all the air will be got out of the system. And, and how often are we talking about doing this? How regularly? What's the ongoing maintenance sort of thing? Well, typically whenever this is, the system is filled and pressurized, uh, that's the only time we really need to use this. This may be used at a later stage if anyone ever needs to replace the fluid, but normally if someone is servicing it, uh, they can take a sample of the fluid and actually check its properties. So that, that, that will then determine whether they need to replace it or not. And yeah. typically after a particular period, you would so, have to... So all blockages and deposits, they get removed effectively. Right. When the pump, the, the first thing that's happening is the pump is taking out the air from the system, and then it's also taking out any debris that was left in there, any physical debris that was left in there from the installation. And you see on the, the pump at the bottom here, there's a small filter, so that will capture any physical debris. So you're going to get rid of the air and the debris from the system. Then when you're sure, you will see in here, it will be completely clear. With the glycol, it goes slightly fuzzy, with the, uh, slightly sort of uh, misty with the air bubbles. When that's cleared out, it will be com completely clear. Then you can replace the top. So this allows you now to pressurize the system. By putting this top on, we can then pressurize the system and ch change the valve so we can increase the pressure in the system. We need to get the system pressure about one bar above the pressure at the height at the top of the manifold. So typically, that's going to be the system pressure to about one and a half bars. Now, one of the things we're doing with these demonstrations today, we're trying to demystify all the sort of mystery that's been surrounding these type of systems. And uh, this is now available to everyone and anyone, isn't it? It's taking it away. I mean, this is going to be commonplace. That's uh, right. And places like Plum Center and so on are actually bringing it out to the mass market. That's right. Yes, they're typically available as packages. And what you get is the collector on the roof with the kit and a cylinder which will either be an existing cylinder with a coil or a replacement cylinder or on a new build, you need a cylinder anyway. The only additional uh, uh, materials that you, you wouldn't normally be used to would be the pump station, a controller, and an expansion vessel for the, the pressurized loop. So that's really all there is to the system. So hopefully today you can see the collector and the, the associated components, and that will hopefully remove any of the mystery as well. So th this is really all there is to the system. And we're looking at a, say, a 30 tube system heating a up to 300 liter cylinder for a family of up to five people, and that will give we, we typically aim for 55% plus of the contribution across the year. It's important to note that if ourselves or anyone is telling you how much in terms of a percentage that the, the solar will contribute, 
you can achieve more than that, but in order to get a good contribution and a good efficiency, we tend to look from around 50 to 60%, but certainly you can experience that you, you achieve more than that. And Bob, you were going to say okay, something. Okay, just back onto the maintenance. One of the questions that comes up is how you tell if the glycol is degraded. Well, over a period of time, the glycol will degrade with age, um, and you can tell by you lose the frost protection, so you can use a refractometer to test for the frost protection. So you can measure whether it's still got the same protection it had at the beginning. It changes color. It tends to go darker and it, the, it goes more acidic. So as it becomes more acidic, then it's breaking, the glycol's breaking down and losing the frost protection. And also some, some brands of glycol smell because it breaks down to a lactic acid and you can smell like a milk-like smell. So it's quite important at that stage, you need to pump back, connect it back to the system you then drain the system into the pump, remove that degraded glycol, and then you must use a cleaner in the system that's going to remove all the degraded glycol from the system. This is absolutely critical for your customer because if you don't remove the great degraded glycol and put more glycol back in, the new glycol will degrade quicker. But presumably, again, you get a manual with this that tells you step by step yep, exactly what right. you must and do. And another thing is that the most common tube that we, that we sell is the one which has that temperature limiter. And by limiting the temperature in the system, that limits the pressure and therefore the operational temperature and, and pressures that the fluid is exposed to. So that helps prolong the life yeah. of it as well. And if there are any, ever any periods of non-occupancy in the building, there are features in any modern day solar controller which will actually protect it uh, while you're away, holiday modes and stagnation prevention oh, modes. Okay. Yeah. So that's another way of prolonging the life of your, your system between services.